Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. We're gonna have a look at the electric vehicle market, including Tesla, that's gonna have their earnings tomorrow, but most importantly, NIO and uh, Xpeng. We can see that the lithium carbonate price has been still going down over the past five years. Obviously, the peak was, you know, a year and a half ago, and it's ever since kind of been going really, really down. This is going to affect the gross margin of all these companies because the battery is such a huge part of the of the car. Actually, I think uh, you, could, you could think about it of uh, 3% of the battery or so is uh, kind of lithium, if I recall. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's not a huge kind of percentage wise of the, you know, weight percentage. You, even three percent might be a bit too much but uh, it's not a whole lot but it, it costs quite a bit and it's uh, one of the stoppers i would say so it's really great to see that this numbers keeps going down we can also see the 30 week uh, the last 30 week delivery numbers again the blue is tesla we've got li auto in the green we got xiaofeng in the in the yellow and then we got neo in the white and the trend for the year has been that you know especially for NIO and Xpeng, they had a kind of slow start of the year. And as the year has gone by, they kind of first started to stabilize the numbers. It took a longer for uh, Xpeng. You can see the delta there, that the white, which is NIO, they kind of were well ahead of uh, Xpeng for most of the year, especially in, let's say, from April through, I don't know, through August or September. When Xpeng launched their Mona 3 as, and also the G6 in a lot of different markets, they started to kind of catch up, but then again, Neo just recently launched their second brand, Neo uh, Onvo, and you can see that uh, we just got the numbers for the last uh, couple of weeks. I don't, you know, I'm not hundred percent sure if these numbers are correct, but I would say they are most likely in the correct range because if you recall, the CEO or CFO said on the last earnings call that they're planning to have uh, around five thousand car deliveries of Onvo for this month, so October. And 5,000 deliveries should be around 8 to 9, maybe 1,000 cars per single week. So this is really, really, you know, looking good for you. Remember that last week they delivered 4,700. You would add to it another 900 for Onvo. So we are getting close to 6,000 for at least last week. And this week they just had 3,900 in Neo and another 900 supposedly, which is close to 5,000. And I'm very, very happy with that because if you look at that kind of numbers, if you add to that, so you add, you know, the NEO deliveries and then you add the onto that Onvo, it would be around 15,000 deliveries with, I would say, this whole week remaining, which is five working days. And in addition to that, next week, there's also four more days. So I'm very confident that NEO, if they manage to, on of those nine remaining working days, deliver around let's say close to a thousand per day that's another nine thousand cars which will get us close to twenty four thousand yeah twenty four thousand deliveries let's look at the blue numbers so blue bar as i mentioned now it's a uh, four uh, or five straight months of around twenty thousand deliveries for neo which is great Re whereas last year we only had these two months essentially july and august so comparatively, although the absolute numbers hasn't really been that much higher than the two best months of last year, we had now five straight months, whereas they had last year it had only two straight months. So there's definitely an uptick there, and I would say that looking at the 15,000 cars that they have delivered roughly till, till uh, let's say, Monday or Sunday last week, and with those additional, you know, week and a half or so, it would definitely get close to... 24 25,000 maybe 26,000 who knows if you kind of zoom out a little bit because remember that over the past years if we have the year to date chart look at this so they kind of started fairly high at around eight or nine dollar and then it kind of just went really really bad to three dollar four us dollar so now of course you know once you go from here less than four us dollar up to seven or something of course you're gonna have a let's say at least some kind of pullback my expectations and hope is that this is the bottoming for the moment hopefully we will see uh kind of as we get into the q3 earnings which i expect be still better than q2 which was at the very least moving in the right direction because remember that there's not only that um one of the one of the issues that i had always uh, over the past two years with neo is the net income or in this case net loss right you can see that on this way uh, on the line 30 there you can see i highlighted there 
let's zoom in a little bit so you see it much better so as you look in there you can see that they started to almost kind of go break even in q1 of 2021 but then the lithium carbonate price as i mentioned before <laughs> kind of skyrocketed amongst you know the competition so not only did the lithium carbonate price uh, skyrocket the competition also really, really went hard and you started to see price cuts so in this market in q1 of 2021 we were in a place where you had a i don't know like uh, one year or so lead time for electric uh, electric cars whereas as uh, all of a sudden you know the market turned uh, and there was more competition lithium carbonate price peaked there was huge supply issues there was semiconductor shortages and so on and so forth and you can see that just before they turned you know positive in terms of net income it started to go bad again and it was really really bad in let's say four or six quarters ago they were losing around 800 million or so each quarter but then over the last two quarters we can see that they starting to go back in the right direction and they lost less than 700 million i would like to see a much much better improvement there to be honest remember that the Q quarter over quarter change was around three percent now it states minus three percent but remember that we are comparing to a negative number so we it means that the net, the net income or in this case net loss improved around three percent compared to q1 but look at this number so the total revenue increased by 75 percent but they managed only to cut the net income by you know three percent so that's one of the you know red flags with neo in my opinion but they seem at the same time to have enough money to kind of get by and survive if you look at on the cash on hand you can see on this line on line 38 so i kind of essentially try to see you know what cash position do they have and how much money are they losing each quarter and i get these kind of rough numbers there they might not be you know fully right but it's roughly in the same ballpark correct so i don't foresee you know they should end up the year by let's say even middle of next year neo should have around three three and a half billion us dollar on cash and this is you know including quite a bit of loss still you know they are not, i'm not expecting them to all of a sudden go from 670 million loss or so to you know let's say minus 200 no i'm expecting to go you know from 674 525 maybe a bit of increase in uh, q1 of next year compared to q4 to 560 almost so yeah it's gonna most likely decrease for sure than at the net loss but i would like it to decrease a little bit faster that all being said remember that there's another part to neo compared to for example uh, let's say the xpeng right xpeng they had a really really you know strong growth uh, over the past month and also we mentioned that the xpeng's mona 3 when it launched there was high high demand for them and they are enjoying nice margins the issue with neo is that they are you know kind of getting whatever money they make and they actually have higher vehicle margin compared to xpeng for example they simply manage to make more money than xpeng makes on every single car sold i believe if i'm taught about it correctly but the issue for neo is that they have this kind of cost additional cost of the battery swap infrastructure and on this column here you can see there's the all-time swaps roughly on the rough we can see that since september we are two-thirds into this uh, new month october and they already added another two two million or so new swaps so that is really great but we can also see that they again started to ramp up the swap stations something i don't fully agree with remember because the fewer swap stations the more of the cars uh, or uh, let's say the fleet has to share fewer stations maybe a little bit longer wait time but you know the utilization goes up and why do we need higher utilization of each swap station well because they need to reach a certain limit of around 60 swaps or so per, per station per day in order to go break even and right now we are over 30 right just above 30 according to the latest statistics i think we are around 32 or 31 so halfway up there although there is a nice bump there if you compare to the beginning of the year which was uh, just above 20 we are now just above 30 in terms of you know swaps per station per single day and that is a huge improvement in just you know three quarters of a year so we are definitely moving in the right direction and if we actually look at the graphs uh, we can see that my expectation is that the other sales which is on on this graph here you can see other sales when you on the dark green on the bottom and then the the vehicle sales is the pink and the total revenue is the blue obviously those two are much more related to the delivery numbers so for example on those quarters where they 
have a lower delivery, the vehicle sales will obviously take a much harder hit. Whereas other sales is not really fully dependent on every single quarter delivery. It's much rather dependent on the total fleet size, I would say. And that is, you know, increasing slowly but steadily. And most importantly also, I think that this is uh, one of the most important graphs for NEO. And this shows you the other sales and they are currently losing money on other sales because of, you know, the battery swap stations as I mentioned in the previous mm, utilization, for example. And you can see though that the delta between the other sales and the cost of other sales, which is right now negative, and remember we are here, so Q2 of 2024, is right now, you know, minus 30. So there's around 30 million or so um, difference between those. So they need another 30 million in order to, let's say, make break even. But if you look at when would that kind of turn more, you know, break even, my expectations or projections are around end of the year, right? And this uh, red number obviously is the, the last earnings. So I do say we are moving in the right direction, but a bit slowly compared to Xiaoping, which is why I think the market kind of shows it. Uh, if you look at the both companies, you can see that Xpeng is at 10 or so billion market cap and NIO is just under 11. And Xpeng is kind of over the 52 week range. They are much higher up compared to their 52 week, uh, let's say, span compared to NIO. But still, I'm very positive about NEO right now. I think there's uh, some really good things happening. And uh, most importantly, if we go back to the you know delivery numbers, the best thing for NEO right now is that this second line here, so the on-wall line, is kind of starting to ramp up. I remember that the CFO said, I believe in, um, in December, they're, they're expecting double of the numbers of delivery for on-wall than they expected in October. So I would say we are definitely having a nice possibility to have a December of over 30,000 cars for NEO. And that is something that really, really is positive because we are going into next year, 2025, with expectations of a steady, you know, 25,000 deliveries every single month. And hopefully by end of the year, closer to average of 35,000, maybe 40,000 deliveries every month. So I think it's moving in the right direction. I do think the price of the stock, if you look into once it kind of breaks even, I believe this is a nice uh, nice opportunity right now. But again, this is not investment advice. And thank you for watching and like and subscribe and see you in the next one.